The story takes place in the beautiful Barcelona. There is a legend about a treasure of an adventurer. 500 years ago, when Magellan sailed around the world, he discovered a batch of gold worth $5 billion, but he didn't bring back the gold. Instead, he hid it in a secret place. For many years, countless treasure hunters have been exploring this secret, but there has been no result. Nathan Drake and his brother Sam are orphans who have been obsessed with adventure since childhood. They fantasize that when they grew up, they would also go to explore the legendary treasure. They sneaked into the museum, looking for clues related to the treasure legend. They saw a map, the first world map drawn by Magellan himself. The brothers were very excited and wanted to open it and take a look. When they touched the protective cover, the anti-theft alarm went off. The guard on duty rushed over, they had already sneaked into the museum and were caught red-handed three times. The older brother was told that he would be imprisoned this time. He didn't want to be imprisoned, so he chose to leave his younger brother behind. He set off on his own to explore the treasure, in a blink of an eye. It was more than 10 years later, Nathan Drake became a bartender in a bar, and his handsome appearance also made him a master of flirting with girls. While helping a beauty light a cigarette, he took away her diamond-studded bracelet. It turns out that he is not only good at bartending and flirting, but also a skilled thief. This scene was just seen by Victor Sullivan, who has always been obsessed with treasure hunting. He exposed Nathan Drake and told him that there was a more profitable project that needed a helper. When he came to his house, what caught his eye was that world map. Victor Sullivan told Nathan Drake that the Magellan treasure was not a legend. He and Nathan Drake's brother Sam had been exploring for many years. After finding the captain's diary at that time, Sam disappeared. Victor Sullivan often heard Sam mention Nathan Drake, so he came to him for help. With the dream of exploring the treasure since childhood, and the expectation of finding his brother, the old and young partners started their treasure hunt. The first problem to be solved is to collect two keys to open the treasure. They are not the only ones interested in this batch of treasure. There is also Santiago Moncada, the descendant of the family that funded Magellan's voyage 500 years ago. They all came to an auction. This object being auctioned as a cross is one of the keys. Victor Sullivan pretended to bid with Santiago Moncada while arranging Nathan Drake to cut off the power supply of the venue. Obviously, he didn't have the strength to compete with Santiago Moncada. Just as Nathan Drake opened the distribution box and was about to cut off the power, Santiago Moncada's men rushed in. Nathan Drake who ran out was stopped by another big man who came over. There was no way out front and back. Nathan Drake kicked at the big man, but the big man gave him a rebound directly, seeing that the auction was about to end. Nathan Drake used Jackie Chan movie moves. This jump successfully interrupted the bidding of the cross. Victor Sullivan took advantage of the situation and changed into the staff's clothes and got the key smoothly. As he was leaving proudly, Santiago Moncada's hired killer Braddock stopped him. They were old acquaintances, both aiming for the gold. Fortunately, the staff arrived in time and let Victor Sullivan get rid of Braddock. On the other side, Nathan Drake also escaped safely with his wit. With the key, they came to Barcelona recorded in the captain's diary. A beautiful girl walked towards them. Her name was Chloe Fraser. She also had a cross key in her hand. Facing Victor Sullivan's proposal to partner up, Chloe Fraser refused. She didn't trust Victor Sullivan very much. Victor Sullivan felt something was wrong, so he asked Nathan Drake to check the key in his bag. Sure enough, Chloe Fraser took away the key. A street parkour chase began. After catching up with Chloe Fraser, Nathan Drake told her that having only one key was useless. The three of them had to trust each other and work together. Chloe Fraser compromised and joined their team. They came to the Pine Church recorded in the captain's diary. Smart Nathan Drake found the secret room here and the two keyholes. According to what was written in the diary, they needed to trust each other. The two keys were divided into two groups. One went to heaven and the other went to hell. Nathan Drake and Chloe Fraser took one key and went underground. Victor Sullivan took the other key and went above ground. Along the passage, Nathan Drake and Chloe Fraser came to an underground bar. The hell characters above the bar should be the next passage hint. Nathan Drake resumed his old profession and started bartending. Chloe Fraser looked for a new keyhole. At this time, Braddock's men found them. They are. Sex on the beach. Oh, shit. Hey! Behind the secret door was a dead end. Just as they were disappointed, they looked up and saw the keyhole. Chloe Fraser inserted the key and turned it lightly. 
but it triggered the mechanism directly. The water in the pool on the ground began to pour in. They panicked and thought of the diary saying to trust their partner. There must be a corresponding keyhole on the ground to open this lid. They hurriedly called Victor Sullivan for help. Victor Sullivan followed the location and came to a pizza restaurant, where he found the keyhole on the ground, but it was sealed by glass. He picked up a chair and smashed it hard at the glass, but there was no response. At this time, his old rival Braddock found him and fought with him. Victor Sullivan carried Braddock and smashed the glass, inserted the key. The two teammates who were about to be drowned underground were finally rescued. Then they found a new passage entrance, inserted the key and opened the door. A 2.5 meter giant jar with a history of more than 2,000 years appeared in front of them. Chloe Fraser stepped on Nathan Drake and climbed up to open the jar lid. But what she saw was not the legendary gold, but salt used by ancient people to preserve food. Then all the jars began to crack and thousands of years of antiques became a pile of ruins in an instant. Then Nathan Drake found a long tube in the salt pile, opened it and took a look. It turned out to be the real track map of Magellan's voyage 500 years ago. But Chloe Fraser behind him pointed a gun at Nathan Drake and asked him to hand over the map. Nathan Drake questioned her that she had just saved you. There was no need for this, right? She knocked out Nathan Drake, took the map and key and left. What she didn't expect was that Chloe Fraser actually handed over the map to Santiago Moncada. It turned out that he hired Braddock and Chloe Fraser at the same time. Chloe Fraser followed the plan and uploaded the map to the satellite image. When they arrived at Golden Bay, they first airdropped supplies, then landed and met with the ground team. Santiago Moncada celebrated for the gold that was about to be obtained, and gave a speech about his family's glorious history. For hundreds of years, his family's descendants have not given up on finding the treasure, only he is the one who can get back the family's gold. Braddock next to him cut Santiago Moncada's neck with a curved knife. He turned his head but Chloe Fraser was gone. Braddock took his men to find her in the airdrop cabin. Nathan Drake and Victor Sullivan who were hiding in the car ran into the cabin and took away the map. They wanted to equip themselves with parachutes and sneak away, but they were still discovered by Braddock. At a critical moment Nathan Drake pulled open the airdrop lock. Then they floated to the shore. They came to a hotel and started analyzing the exact location of the treasure. Nathan Drake sorted out and analyzed the postcards that his brother Sam sent him in 10 years. Finally he got the real answer to the treasure. It turned out that those two cross keys were actually compasses. Pull out the gems on the cross. Put the needle on the corresponding pattern. Rotate. The two sides of the cross meet which is exactly where the treasure is. Nathan Drake glanced at Chloe Fraser who was sleeping soundly, left coordinates on the table and went to sleep. When he woke up again, Chloe Fraser left a note as expected, and this was within Nathan Drake's expectation. Nathan Drake gave Chloe Fraser a fake coordinate. He drove a boat by himself, came to the coordinate point, and entered a cave. He dived into the water and swam deep into it. After landing, two huge ships from hundreds of years ago appeared in front of him. He walked into the cabin and saw Victor Sullivan. Victor Sullivan followed his phone location and found here. These barrels are spices on top and full of gold underneath. These two ships of gold, plus antique ships from hundreds of years ago, are priceless treasures. They did it. They found the legendary treasure. At this time, Braddock's squad also arrived here. The spectacular sight in front of him also shocked him. Braddock ordered his men to find Nathan Drake and Victor Sullivan and kill them. Nathan Drake and Victor Sullivan hid in the underground warehouse and escaped. The two were discussing how to divide the gold. When suddenly the ship began to shake. Was it an earthquake? Nathan Drake and Victor Sullivan hurried out to check. And nothing had happened. It was Braddock's big move. She actually called in a cargo helicopter. It lifted up the two ancient ships and the gold. This way of moving, simple and crude and effective. Nathan Drake and Victor Sullivan, the two came to the deck to discuss tactics. Victor Sullivan climbed up the chain to the helicopter and successfully hijacked it. A visual feast of aerial chase, once again opened. Me? 
Seeing Braddock's ship about to hit, luckily a cannonball rolled down from the stairs. Nathan Drake stuffed the cannonball into the muzzle, filled with gunpowder, and cut a section of fuse. Everything was ready, just waiting for fire to fire. At the critical moment, the lighter couldn't light up. The fire finally lit up. Just as the plane was about to hit him, the cannonball fired at the plane. Free! You did it, kid! Nathan Drake was celebrating with Victor Sullivan when Braddock's voice came from behind again. It turned out that when the ship was about to hit the mountain, Braddock grabbed the iron chain and jumped onto the ship. What I can't take away, you don't want to take away either. Braddock threw down the anchor. The plane and the hull were instantly pulled by a huge force and couldn't move. Nathan Drake saw this and quickly climbed up the iron chain to the plane. Braddock followed closely behind. Victor Sullivan took a look at the gold in his arms, shouted Braddock's name and threw his backpack at her. Only one pack of gold that was brought out fell into the sea floor, in the last second of the hull falling off. Nathan Drake leaped forward and grabbed Victor Sullivan's hand. Braddock, who had just come out of the water, sank into the sea with the falling hull. Please subscribe to my channel. Share different movies and videos every day.